This video will explain the Event Assistant in iScout Basketball. To access the settings for Event Assistant, we navigate to the More tab and from there select Event Assistant. The Event Assistant falls into two general categories. First of all, Visual Hints, which are simply color indications of what we believe the next event should be or should not be in some cases. The second case are one-touch events to reduce the number of keystrokes to accomplish a task. Let's start with a visual hint for assists. We'll enable that. We'll navigate to our game. And now let's add a shot. In this case, this team is defaulted to made shots. So it comes up as made. Now when I select another player that's not the player who did the shooting, you'll see that the assist button is enabled. Had I selected the opponent, the assist button would be disabled. So let's look at our next setting. Let's look at another example. Here we have visual hints for rebounds. And we've got that set to on. Navigate to our game. Add a shot. Now when I select a player, this will be a missed shot, when I select a player, it knows that the likely choice is offensive rebound. If I select the opponent, it knows the likely choice is defensive rebound. However, we should point out at this time that the gray is just an indicator. If, in fact, I wanted an offensive rebound here, I could add it. The fact that it's gray doesn't stop me from adding it, it's just a visual guide. Now let's take a look at our other group of assist features, which are one-touch assists. Let's start with, for a player who's made an assist, looking at the event assistant setting for one-touch. I can select this to on. I can also vary, this is the time indicator, which is six seconds. I can change how long it's going to take before a timer mechanism requires that I make a choice. So we've got that set. We'll go to our game. I'll choose this team because the shot's default to made. And you'll see the assist button light up with a green band, then a yellow band, and then a red band, and then it'll go away. Let's look at that again. Again, the color change indicates that I have to make a choice. If I make a choice on this side, it's going to add an assist for that side. One more time. If I make a choice from the other side, it simply dismisses the event and selects that player. If I unselect, I can see that it didn't add an assist for anyone. Now let's take a look at another case. Let's try it for rebounds. I'll choose this team since they default to missed shots. And you can see I have a choice. If I go to this side, it's going to be defense. If I go to that side, it's going to be offensive. And if I wait, it's going to time out. Okay, let's try that again. If I select the player and the shot and decide I don't want this, I can dismiss it by double tap on either of the two buttons in this case, and it gets rid of that mode so I can go on to the next thing that I want to do. If when I add this event, I decide at this point I want to make some kind of edit on the shot, in this case I want to mark it as a layup, you notice my timer mechanism is almost spent. However, by going into make a detail setting, it restarts the timer, so now I can continue on and say there's where the rebound went. Let's go back one more time to our settings. And you can see we have this option, one touch option, for rebounds, for block in certain cases, and for turnover steal combination. And you can set the timer separately for each one. Let's turn these off and look at another feature, putbacks. For the putback case, I have a shot that was missed. If the same team does an offensive rebound, you notice on the screen an overlay indicating the player that just made the rebound and a shot. If I touch within that overlay, it will add that player as having taken the shot, allowing me quicker entry in the putback case. Let's look at our next feature. And in this case we're going to look at the free throw. 
Okay, I have my player take a free throw shot. And you'll notice right now there's a negative indicator on the free throw button because that's the state of the current shot. I can change that and the shot by making positive and it's indicated on that button. If at this point I want to add another free throw for the same player, for a two, two shot free throw, touch the button, add the shot, and I'll leave that one as missed so I can see my status. If I decided that wasn't the correct status, I could touch this button and edit recent, and it would show me this is what happened. I can go back to that first shot, change its status, and now that's reflected here and it's also reflected in our score. Another thing I can do is during this time, if I took the first shot and then my team had some kind of sub-event going on, just the time, it still shows me that free throw button because it recognizes that I might still be in the middle of a free throw event. So again, I could touch that button, add another shot, make that one made, and that's what happened. Now if I go back and edit the sequence, You'll see that I had the missed free throw, I had the sub, and I had the made free throw. This concludes our demonstration of the capabilities in Event Assistant. We didn't cover all the events, just a representative example, so um, we want to point out that any of these events can be turned on together, and it will do work as you would expect. So I go to my game. do a shot. You can see I got my rebound going on. I switch it to made, switches to assist, change it back again, touch over here, sees that I have a put back, and so on. So that's the event assistant. We hope you enjoy our features.